Hello everyone, Peacemaker here with Learning Peace, and today we're going to be talking about the nature of seduction. We're going to get into what the Bible speaks about when it speaks of seduction and how we can be on guard against Satan's tactics. Um, we're going to define first what seduction is. We're going to define how seduction works uh, from a spiritual, emotional, and psychological standpoint. And then in the next part, we're going to talk about how temptation works. Um, you can see um, my video, What is Sin? Um, I did a video discussing and defining what sin is. And I also break down in detail uh, using James chapter 1 how we are tempted um, and how we can be on guard against spiritual temptation or emotional temptation um, as well so you can go back and see that video i will leave a link in a in the description below um just as a precursor to this video if you need to go back and understand what sin is as a foundation and then lastly uh, we will discuss how to fight temptation how to engage in the spiritual warfare strategies uh, especially from an emotional standpoint if you are a person who uh, is seeking further clarity and understanding on this topic of seduction and how it works uh, so that you can help others and uh, yourself to be on guard. Now, when we talk about seduction in this video, um, in this lecture, it will be it will not just be exclusively sexual seduction because um, seduction is usually um, associated with uh, enticement of a person to sexual intercourse. While we will discuss that um, and how that works um, briefly in this video, uh, the overall overarching tone and the uh, deeper understanding of seduction has to do with deception and manipulation. Um, and we're going to really unpack that. Again, this is going to be more from a spiritual, um, a psychological and emotional standpoint. And uh, we can be seduced as human beings to fall into anything, uh, any type of sin. It can be drugs, it can be alcohol, it can be lying, it can be manipulation. Uh, it can be, of course, sexual. It can be uh, anything. Um, any sin that exists, um, we will dive into Genesis and see exactly how Satan himself seduced Eve to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. All right, so let's first start to define what seduction is, and then we're going to discuss how it works from a spiritual, emotional, and psychological perspective and how people get hooked into it. All right, so first let's define what seduction is. Seduction, using uh, Merriam-Webster, is defined as something that seduces. It is temptation. It is something that attracts or charms. Certain synonyms that exist for seduction include allurement, enticement, and temptation. I also think that it is very important to look at what the word mesmerize means. Mesmerize means to subject to mesmerism, also to hypnotize or to spellbind. When we look at the book of Galatians, Paul, he asks the church uh, in Galatians 3, 1, he says, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you? Again, that's Galatians 3, 1. Who has bewitched you? He sang that to the church of Galatia because they had fallen into false doctrine. They had fallen into uh, Judaism. They had been moved away from the gospel of Christ uh, to follow after the law, to follow after things such as circumcision and um, following laws in order to be made right with God. Um, they had totally missed the point of Christ and they had been bewitched. How they were bewitched can, you know, that can come into various forms. There may be an emotional side where they felt like they were, they were, it was appealing to their pride that they felt like they had to do works in order to be made right with God. So they wanted to do something, you know, and to take part in their salvation uh, in that regard. And that meant following the law. So they really did not understand, perhaps. That leads into the second way that they could have been bewitched. It was a lack of knowledge 
the word says, uh, God says that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So it could be the lack of knowledge and their lack of understanding why Christ really came and not being grounded, um, not being anchored in that truth. So they were bewitched. They fell away from the truth um, that was delivered unto them originally. Um, so there's are two ways in which people can be seduced uh, or bewitched. So let's look into that word bewitched really quickly. Uh, the definition of bewitched, according to Merriam-Webster, it is defined um, as the way of being controlled or affected by or as if by a magic spell. It is also uh, defined as being influenced, attracted, or charmed. There's that word charmed again, as if by magic. Okay, so in this video, we're going to also talk about witchcraft. Um, we're going to talk about uh, the nature of witchcraft as well, because in order to understand seduction, we have to understand that witchcraft is as the sin of rebellion, the Bible says. And we're going to really understand the workings of that. Um, just to summarize, it is mainly about power and control. Witchcraft is using a means of manipulation to seduce someone, to try to deceive them into doing something that is not right. Uh, it is usurping the authority of God, as Satan did in the book of Genesis here in chapter 3, when he questioned God's order, is trying to redefine god's order it is an illusion of freedom um what satan did let's go ahead and look at genesis chapter 3 and in my videos you, you will notice that i always go back to genesis because this is something that we really need to understand um i will go ahead and read chapter 3 uh starting in verse 1 it says now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the lord god had made and he said unto the woman yea has god said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. So the first thing that Satan did here, and I mentioned this in my videos before, is that he started to question God's word. He questioned God's word and character. He said, did God really say that you shall not eat of every tree in the garden? So the battle that we face in all of our life is um, the foundation of when people cast doubt on God's word, just as Satan did with Eve here, we are also faced with that temptation to believe doubt. So the question that you need to ask yourself is, do I really believe God's word? This is how you first begin to um, stay on guard against seduction of any kind. Do you believe God's word? Do you believe God's word when it talks about sin and the seriousness of sin? Do you believe it? Do you understand it really? Uh, because like I said earlier, the scripture says that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. It's not just a matter of knowing right from wrong, but it's understanding. Proverbs talks about the power of understanding and how it will keep you, how it will guide you. When you understand the order of things and why god created such laws why the law of love is and why he causes us to love rather than seeing it through a more perverted or distorted or false lens that leads us to further unrighteousness and we understand the law of cause and effect as well and consequences that exist all right so again, the first thing that he did was attack Eve's faith in God. So um, it wasn't a matter that, you know, Eve was there and she couldn't see God. She didn't know if he existed or not. She knew that he existed. But even still, Satan attacked her faith in the character of God. Let's go on and reach, um, read uh, verse 2 here. It says, And the woman said unto the serpent, May we eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden but of the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden god has said ye shall not eat of it neither shall ye touch it lest ye die so um again we're seeing that uh satan here is saying that god cannot be trusted that we can believe whatever we are going through is not good 
meaning that we begin to be seduced by the lie that God's will is not best for us, that we do not believe that God's law that he delivered unto us when he says, for example, do not touch, or he didn't say don't touch, but he said do not eat of the tree. Um, that is something that we need to be on guard against. So it is pride to believe that uh, we are, whatever we are going through is not good or that God is not good. Here's the kicker in verse four, it says, and the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. He said it again, ye shall not surely die. I will re read that. He is calling God a liar here. Notice that he said, ye shall not surely die. He is, uh, he's saying that God's character is of such that he is hiding something. So what happens when people are seduced, generally speaking? When they are seduced by something, they are believing the lie. Let's say that they're a Christian, you know, because uh, Christians are the ones that are um, calling people into the light and to be on guard against um, persuasion and manipulation and seduction because we are in the truth. Uh, Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. So... Um, if we care about truth, if we are having a love for the truth, we will not be those who manipulate. We will not be those who seduce and who um, try to lead people into darkness as Satan does. Satan, however, in 2 Corinthians eleven thirteen says, when it comes to seduction and deception, that for such are false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And it says in the following verse, in verse 14, and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So we have people who are going around claiming to be Christians, or not even just claiming to be Christians, but claiming to know what is best for you. They are claiming to know say that they have some secret knowledge that if you do this then you're going to get power you're going to get control you're going to have understanding you're going to be enlightened you know you're going to have the secrets of the universe you're going to know x y and z you know this is seduction this is the original lie in the garden of eden this is witchcraft this is how this is the foundation of witchcraft because right here satan says that God is hiding something. He says that God has secrets. This is, if you go ahead and just um, open your Bible and look at verse four, you will see that he is saying in verse five, especially, uh, I will read it. It says, for God does know. So he's again, attacking God's character here and lying. He says, for God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So Satan outright told a lie, told a lie on God's character. He totally warped it. He says uh, that, again, God is having secrets, and his will is not best for you. Um, the second thing that Satan is saying here is that your eyes will be opened. Again, that's alluding to some so-called secret understanding that you can have or a secret knowledge and that God's character is to keep you down. It's not what's best for you. It's not loving. It's not protecting you. Um, but instead it's to keep, keep you down because he's pretty much saying that God is some narcissistic, tyrannical bully here. who just doesn't care about you. The third thing that you can notice here in verse five is that you can see that Satan, like I said, uh, about three or four times already is that he is trying to give Eve this power and this control over her life. Um, he is, again, questioning the order that God created and the role, the one role that he set here in the garden, the boundary. It is a boundary. It is a testing of boundaries. So he is questioning all of these things. Um, and not only that, but he is mixing in the truth with the lie. See, that is another way that seduction works. Um, I know that I'm kind of, um, I'm not really getting off topic, but I know that I'm kind of bouncing around to really try to hammer different points here because uh, I don't want these things to be missed. So given the, co the context of the conversation here, that's why I'm focusing on this so deeply here. You'll notice that he mixed truth with, with the lie here in verse four when he said that ye shall not surely die. That is the way that seduction works as well, is when people mix truth 
with lies. There's an old saying that says that rat poison is 99% good food and 1% bad. And that is true because the rat would not eat the poison, if it were just poison sitting on the floor, would avoid it. But it has to be mixed in with a lie. And then it will eat the food, thinking that it's food. The smells are overpowering of food um, and all of that. And uh, it's looking at it and seeing that, hey, this looks like food. And, you know, it's looking at it, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. So it eats it. <laughs> if I can use a, a rat as an example... Um, I'm not saying that they also have a spiritual nature. That's not what I'm saying when I say that. Let me clarify. But you can see how we are also, human beings are also seduced and deceived um, by eating things as e Eve ate here, ate, ate from the tree. She ate the fruit uh, because she looked at it and she saw, it says here, she saw that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. Um, she saw that the tree was good for food. Uh, verse 6 Um We'll get there in a moment, but uh, that is the way that we are also tricked into consuming different things, consuming lust, consuming sin, not just food, but consuming all these different things that God has said, you know, do not do this. This is going to lead to death. This is going to hurt you. This is going to hurt your neighbor. It's going to hurt our relationship, your relationship with me. And we look at it and say, oh, you know, you're just trying to keep me down. You're trying to stop the fun. You know, don't I deserve this? You know, da, 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 da. So that is the nature of seduction. It is first founded in the idea that God is hiding something or he's trying to keep us down, that he does not have our best interest in mind. And also there are lies that are also mixed with truth and that can further compound the issue. Verse five again, and he says, and ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil. So he's appealing to knowledge, uh, as I've said earlier, knowing, the word knowing is knowledge, knowing good and evil. So it is the... Um, Again, it's about power and control. It's an illusion of freedom. It's not true freedom. He's saying he's, he's creating a void here uh, in Eve's heart. Notice that Eve was perfectly content with God and her husband. And they were together and they were free. You know, they were, they were, they were, they were, they were in a perfect state of being. But here comes Satan telling them that they're missing something, that their life is actually not full, that they need to sin in order to have true life. That is the deception. That is the nature of seduction, that you need to sin, that you need to fall into some sort of sin in order to give you freedom, that you're missing out on something. And, th and that if you don't do that, then, it's not, then you're not going to be fulfilled. Um, Jesus says that he gave to come, he came to give life and life more abundantly. Satan wants to come with the alternative, masquerading as an angel of light, as we just read in 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, that if you do this, then you will have abundant life, no matter what it is. If you do this drug, if you have illicit sex, if you go out and, you know, eat yourself to death, you know, with, with food or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. If you get caught up in this addiction, gambling, you know, it doesn't matter that he says that this is what will give you freedom. This is what will give you life. Even when it comes to murder, they say the lie behind people um, who are um, seduced to murder. They say that if you kill this person, you're going to have power. You're going to feel better. You're going to have freedom. You're taking justice into your own hands. Or it's just from the idea that you're going to feel better if you do this, you're going to have freedom. That is the lie. That is the lie that Satan tries to get us as human beings overall to believe because we are all in sin. Uh, when we are outside of Christ, we are all breakers of God's law. No matter what we've done, we are all guilty of God's law. We need to be made right with Christ through faith in Christ and believing in his sacrifice and his atonement for us through his blood. So that is the foundation of seduction let's go ahead and look at verse six here it says and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat so we notice here in verse six something very important it is the lust of the flesh 
the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It's those three things. The first one is the lust of the flesh, the second is the lust of the eyes, and the third is the pride of life. First John 2.16 talks about the um, these things here in the world, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It says, starting in verse 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that does the will of God abideth forever. Uh, verse 15, we should probably back up and read that verse, um, the one that came before that. The command is to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. So that is the foundation. Because we have the understanding we need to be able to have the understanding that this world will pass away that this world will not fulfill i mean we look at celebrities we look at all these people out here in the world doing these things that they ought not be doing and we notice just how miserable they are we notice just how under satan's spell that they are and you know we we, we look at these things on tv and on the media, and we observe them, but we see the effects of it, but we often are still seduced for uh, some of us. We're still seduced by this illusion of power, this control that these people have. This It is very alluring. The people look very alluring. They don't look real, and a lot of times it is not real. It is not a reflection of reality. Um, Hollywood, in and of itself, the word Hollywood it derives from the holly tree and the holly tree was used by the druids who were known for being priests and wizards they were practicing witchcraft hollywood movies are a form of bewitching manipulation to try to get you to believe uh, something about reality that isn't true to make you feel like you're missing out on something or that your life is not what it should be or what it can be and that you have to follow these ideas or these practices or these beliefs in order to have the good life um it is manipulation at its finest subliminal messaging um is also something to look out for these things that satan was telling eve in the gar garden here are also a form of subliminal messaging or being very subtle to implant seeds of doubt or ideas into your mind um so it is what is called lesser magic and bewitchment there's no such thing uh if we understand it in a truer sense but there are many uh, Hollywood actors who also practice witchcraft and they follow the Kabbalah and the Talmud and all of these other things that we're not going to get into. Uh, you can investigate these things further on your own um, and uh, be cautious about uh, where you get your information from. But uh, even just looking at television and understanding that television these are called programs. They are programming your mind to believe something about reality that isn't true or something about yourself. When you look at commercials, they're all very seductive. You look at a cheeseburger commercial, for example, McDonald's. Uh, I'm using the most popular ones. Uh, they get people to fall into this line that, hey, if I don't have this, then I am not content. Remember when Satan, uh, right here in the verse that we just read here, he was trying to create a void in Eve's heart? He was trying to get her to say, hey, you're mi actually missing something. Eve had everything already. She was perfect. She was with God. But she was deceived into wanting more by the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Is that not what an advertisement is or a commercial uh, in the realest sense, when you see, you know, these quarter pounder cheeseburgers and all this unhealthy food, you know, flashing on your screen and these very seductive false ways, because you know that when you go to get the cheeseburger at McDonald's or the fries or the chicken nuggets or whatever, that they don't look like the picture um, on the commercial, you know, because they actually go to great lengths to manipulate the images and they, they actually use... Uh, not just Photoshop, but they take great, great, careful time and energy and skill to get that cheeseburger to look exactly 
the way that they want it to, to make it appear seductive to the eyes. It's the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And then when you actually eat the thing, you know, you're, you're dying of heart disease and you're having all of these physical problems. Um, you know, they, they take so much careful attention to put the lettuce in the right position to make sure that it's peeking out from underneath the bun in the right way and that all of the sesame seeds are placed on this bun in just the, the perfect meticulous manner and that the lighting is absolutely perfect, that you can see the ketchup and the mayo and all, whatever, all of these condiments oozing from underneath that juicy looking patty that is just shimmering in the light you know they take great great time <laughs> and effort to seduce people into looking and, and, and looking at this cheeseburger and desiring it and it's not just that but it's the fries as well it's uh, all of the food that they use you know it, they, they, they make sure that the chicken is looking absolutely crispy that the fries are just the perfect uh have the perfect amount of salt that you can see glistening on top of them they're very golden yellow and just crispy looking and the, you know you can just crunch it in your mouth is watering just looking at it or even just hearing about it that is the nature of seduction and it is the lack of knowledge is when we don't understand or really care it's not that just we don't understand we all know that eating cheeseburgers is not good for us but why do we do it anyways well, it can probably be, um, you know, the pride of life. Now, I'm not saying, please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that if you eat a cheeseburger, then you're a sinner. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just talking about, I'm using something very simple that almost all of us as human beings are falling prey to. Um, that is the seduction of unhealthy food, especially. Because um, we are being trained to say that, hey, this is what's going to make you feel better. And it's not just that. It's the commercials that they go and create as well. It is the idea you know with the mcdonald's logo you know ba -da -ba -ba -ba, i'm loving it you know they say i'm loving it that word love is intentionally used with a disgusting cheeseburger that's going to give you heart disease what is up with that i mean these are things that people often don't really think about you know and hey you know when you eat it it does taste good you know so but the deception is that if it tastes good then it must be good for you or that is going to make you happy but in the long term it becomes an addiction because there are chemicals in that food that keeps you addicted to it and it keeps your health and your energy and your mood it keeps it makes you depressed you know it's ruining your body you know and that's the same way that sin works it looks good it tastes good it feels good but then you are left with a heavy heavy debt you are left with it's like credit card debt you know you can buy all of these things but then you have to pay it you know sin never says that up front oh you're gonna have to you know spend the rest of your life paying off this debt it always says you can have this now you're gonna be fulfilled it's gonna taste good it's gonna feel good you know you're gonna make you're gonna be happy you know it's a lie you're not going to be happy it never says that you're gonna have to spend the rest of your life or with sin especially you're gonna have to spend the rest of your eternity separated from god or you're going to be ruining the rest of your life with these images that you are putting into your mind or this food that you're putting into your body or these things that you're trying to use to make yourself feel better is going to make your life worse it will kill you not just physically but spiritually and sin never ever says that it never warns and that's one way that you can uh, understand the false teaching one of the ways to understand false teachers and false teachings is that they never talk about sin they always say oh you can live any way you want to and jesus jesus forgives you you can live any way it doesn't matter you know it, it's just it, he, he understands you know that's not the gospel that is a false teaching and that is built upon a lie of seduction um just like all of the other sins that we've spoken about here so we've established how the nature of seduction tells us that we are missing out on life if we don't do X, Y, and Z. Uh, it tries to create a void, an imaginary void that we have. Now, sometimes it may be a very real void that we have, but it also tells us that we can meet that in a way that we can feel fulfilled and it really doesn't fulfill us. Rather than depending on God and really understand God's love and character for you, seduction tries to get you to follow into an alternative means that will lead to death and destruction, not just for yourself, but for others and uh, with your relationship with God. 
So it is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life that cause us to want or to desire certain things that are not good for us. Just like with the situation with the cheeseburger, McDonald's commercials, uh, any commercial really, but we're using McDonald's as an example because it's one of the most popular. Um, you know, we desire that cheeseburger looking at with the lust of the eyes. Uh, we see that it will be good for food, which it really isn't food, is, is, is garbage, the lust of the flesh, and then, but up, 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 I'm loving it, you know, it's going to make you happy, it's going to give you a better life, the pride of life. So we see that using that commercial, for example. Uh, the same thing with women and makeup. Uh, and, you know, women who dress themselves up to look like Jezebels. Um, you see the makeup commercials. There are, There is a war that exists in this world on women's bodies. And it is to make women feel like they have to look like this seductive painted up woman with all this makeup on and that is what will make her look desirable to men now a lot of men can't stand that but society doesn't tell you that the media doesn't tell you that the makeup commercials won't tell you that um like maybelline and all these other you know companies they use these women who put on all this makeup, this lipstick, you know, this really high glossy lipstick, and, you know, they cover their faces up uh, with these powders, you know, and these, uh, you, you put mascara on, and, you know, eyeliner to make their eyes darker and to appear bigger, you know, into, it's an illusion. These women don't actually look like that. You take a, a rag, and you wipe that stuff off, and you see who she really is, but they're putting out an illusion for what they want you to they want you to desire them in a false way. Now, am I saying, please don't get upset with me. I'm not saying that women who wear makeup are, you know, are, are doing this, you know, um, yeah, that they're going to hell or that they're sinning by doing this. That is not what I'm saying at all. I am saying that we have to be aware. We have to be aware of how we are being seduced and brainwashed by the system, by Hollywood, by the media, you know, by whatever, by our society to believe these things. Because a lot of times we don't think about these things and, you know, they just go over our heads and we don't really realize that we're buying into this lie that we have to look a certain way in order to be desired by men or to be desired in general. See, that is a seduction. So we become women, especially I speak as a woman, uh, if we buy into this lie, we become sed the seductress. You know, we become this woman who is fake. She doesn't have anything to her, really. You know, she's not intelligent. She doesn't. She's not godly. You know, the Bible says that charm is deceitful. There's that word charm again. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. What is it about fearing the Lord? Well, she walks in God's law. She understands love, true love. Um, she isn't walking after her flesh. She isn't given over to pleasure and power, you know, and these illusions of freedom. You know, she's not seducing people to go into a, to go to hell pretty much. You're leading them to hell and to more heartache and misery. Can't keep a relationship. You know, all these things. This is not what it means to be. A woman but our society tells us that that's what it means you know they're t they tell us that you know we have to look a certain way that our bodies have to look like this that we have to be this color that we have to have this type of hair that we have to sound this way you know our voice has to be a certain way you know we can't be we have to be this this young or this you know we have to look you know we have to dress this way all of these different things all these different things, they say, this is what it means to be a woman. This is what it means to be beautiful. But the world's definition of beauty and God's definition of beauty are very, very different. And if we are not careful, we can buy into these lies of beauty and of, of being charmers. There's Again, let me define that word charm if I haven't already. I don't believe I have. Um, but we're going to, like I said earlier, we're going to get into um, really understanding uh, witchcraft and what it is um, and how you know manipulation is used that word use the words the word witchcraft and um, manipulation synonymously or rebellion synonymously um, so the word charm is the chanting or reciting of a magic spell it's an incantation 
It is also a practice or expression believed to have magic power. Um, when we use the word charm today, uh, it can be used as a physical grace. It's an attraction, um, like having a feminine charm, or it's a compelling attractiveness. Again, that word compelling attractiveness, as the definition says, that is the lust of the eyes, the compelling attraction where we're attracted to something. It may not just be with our eyes, it may be with our spirit. Uh, we believe that something is going to fulfill us. It's a connection, but that connection is based on an illusion. It's based on something that is false. It is based on a lie, a deception. Um, so that's what it is. Um, that's what charm can be and most often is. So we have to be on top of that. And by the way, the verse that I just quoted where it says that charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. That is Proverbs 31.10. Proverbs 31.10. Uh, and again, we've, as Christians, we've probably heard of the Proverbs 31 woman. You can go ahead and read that entire chapter of Proverbs 31 if you haven't already and just see what the ideal woman is not according to the world but according to god's standards to god's word and what she does she's an investor she doesn't just invest in, in things like money and just material things just for the sake of having them because those things are will fade those things don't lead to any life um but she invests in her family she invests in her relationship with god and she does use money as a means to provide for her family not just to use the money to spend on her own lusts or on you know temporal things that don't really matter uh you know she has faith she loves jesus with all her heart you know she's a faithful uh wife she's a faithful bride uh to both christ and to her husband uh you know she and all of her family are blessed. She, her, her children call her blessed. She's, she's very mothering. She's nurturing. Uh, she takes care of her physical, mental, and spiritual health. She's healthy, you know, and I'm not, and it's not that's not in the form of sickness, but she, she's concerned about health uh, and well-being and longevity, um, meaning that she gives her life to the Lord, that she takes care of the life. She is a good steward of the body that God has given her. She serves. She has love and kindness. She is a good steward. She uses her gifts to help others. She is wise. Uh, she's, she's industrious and she works and she's willing to work with her hand. Um, yeah, she works with her hands. Um, she doesn't grumble and complain with tasks. You know, she has a good heart. She's born again. She walks in the spirit. She has love in her heart. She's a homemaker. She spends her time on things which are good. Um, her beauty is not just with outward beauty. It's not outward beauty. Because again, char charm is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. Uh, because beauty is really subjective uh, when it comes to just looking at the lust of the eyes you know you see this woman with all this makeup on and you know she has a nice body and she wears all of these you know these seductive clothing or even expensive clothing and you think that hey this is what it means you know to be a good woman oh she's a bad girl you know i like that you know the guys have a tendency to think like that you know that's not what beauty is beauty is to embrace godliness it's creativity it is a woman who uses her creativity and a sense of style to create the life, the beauty, the tenderness, um, to bless the lives of her loved ones. These are the characteristics of a Proverbs 31 woman. And there are more. You can go ahead and read that chapter. I'm just kind of scratching the surface here um, and just contrasting that with the world's definition of a woman who is out there you know, just, um, thoughting around. It's like the world's definition of the ideal woman is a person like the Kardashians. <laughs> they're not intelligent. They are not at home. They are not homemakers. You know, they're all about, you know, getting the biggest, um, body parts, you know, possible. Um, you know, I don't want to be too graphic here. You know, they're all about, uh, you know, the fashion and, you know, just, uh, just, is, is, is awful there's really nothing to them when it comes to you know a deeper personality or even godliness but it's just more about surface level seduction it is all about training and teaching other women um how they can be more seductive 
um, you know, we have uh, what is popular today, something called TikTok and uh, social media. Um, it's a social media platform where, you know, kids today are just out there, um, not just kids, but just people today are on there. Uh, making videos of different kinds and you know one of them is they're trying they were trying to get their lips to look like uh kylie jenner you know and just stuff like that you all you have to do is go onto google and type in kylie jenner lip challenge and you will see all of these people messing up their faces these women who have been brainwashed to believe that this is the standard of beauty it is it is sad it's it's funny but it's sad when i say funny i don't mean that in like you know it's 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 just take a look at it. You'll see what I mean. It's, it's very sad the way that women especially are being brainwashed to believe that their lips have to look like this fake celebrity. And her lips don't even look like that. Um, you know, they're plumping their lips um, to give them like this, this pouty look. It's really gross in my opinion. It's really sad. And, you know, this is, this is what I'm talking about. Who are the people, we have to ask that question, who are the people who are in charge to tell us that this is what beauty is? Because <laughs> it's really laughable. Who are these people making these decisions? Well, we know that Satan, from a Christian standpoint, is the god, little g god, of this world. And whatever influences that he has upon the larger collective, the system, uh, the people behind the scenes that we can't see who are making these fashion decisions about what is and is not attractive, um, he is all about trying to get us away from God. As we looked in Genesis chapter 3, he is always trying to mess up the image of God. We are made in the image of God. Each and every person born into this world is made in the image of God, and Satan wants to destroy that. He wants to deform that. He wants us to mess up our bodies. He wants us to put stuff in our bodies that shouldn't be there, to deform our physical, you know, bodies into something that we're not, and so on and so forth, because he's trying to create that void, just as he did with Eve, to try to get her to believe that there was something that she was missing out on and that she wasn't desirable. Um... I was looking at a TikTok and there was a challenge going around where I think it's like this mirror effect that your camera has. It's like, you know, if you put the camera up uh, and there's a certain f filter that will um, mirror your camera. So what women are doing is that they put the phone up to their face and then they uh, use this camera effect that will that will use the mirror effect and it will... Um, it will change. I forgot what it's called exactly. It's called a mirror effect. I don't know what this stuff is, guys. So I'm not <laughs> one to speak on this. But basically, you can look it up. And what women are doing, uh, especially younger women, they are breaking down crying because this challenge is supposed to tell them that if their face is not proportionate uh, when they do this mirror effect, then they're ugly, pretty much, is what the message is telling them. And you see people on TikTok crying uh and because they believe that they're ugly because their camera you know uh the mirror effect on their camera told them that they were because their face was out of proportion uh based on this effect so it's very 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 sad um i'm not even sure what you can type in to see that maybe it's uh Okay, I just looked it up uh, so I can make sure that I'm being accurate. It's called the Symmetrical Face TikTok Challenge. So um, that's what it's called. You can check that out. But yeah, people are crying because they believe that their face is not symmetrical when they're using this this app or this, um, this camera uh, filter. And I'm using TikTok as an example. I'm using these popular things today as an example because, hey, this is where our world is. We need to be relevant. Um, TikTok, I don't know if you guys knew this as well, but TikTok... Uh, there's an algorithm where it only shows people who look a certain way. Um, <laughs> you know, if they're usually Caucasian and they have, you know, these certain features, that their videos or their TikToks will actually uh, be uh, more popular. Um, the algorithm actually pushes these people up, giving them a higher advantage over people who don't have this uh, certain look to them. So, um, if you notice TikTok, you will see a theme, uh, if you just look through the videos, or even on YouTube, you just look through a lot of TikTok videos, you will see that there's a certain type of persona that they're looking for, people who look a certain way, you will notice this, this, this theme going all throughout, uh, people who look, you know, a certain way. 
And when people believe these things about themselves, or they believe that this is the standard of beauty, uh, for example, or this is something that they should desire, this is called brainwashing. The definition of brainwashing is a forcible indoctrination to induce someone to give up basic political, social, or religious beliefs and attitudes and to accept contrasting regimented ideas. It is persuasion by propaganda or salesmanship. That is brainwashing. So when we see these things happening throughout our society, it's not just TikTok. It's everywhere, guys. Just open your eyes. Open your eyes and look at the world that you live in. Look at the school systems. Look at the magazines. Look at the stores. Go to the stores. Look at the billboards. And notice all of that everything is based on seduction. Everything is based on trying to sell you something, to tell you something. Um, know that everything in this world, especially as a Christian, that there is a moral behind every movie every tv show that you watch every book that you read there's something that people are trying to tell you about life everything has a moral and everything as we know based on uh the reality that we live in everything is about good versus evil that is true so now we have to test these things to see whether or not um whatever it is that we set our eyes upon um is going to be either good or evil and where is it going to lead us to and really have the understanding about these things and the nature of them and how they work how they manipulate so on and so forth when we walk when we're driving down the street and we see a a rolex watch billboard you know we have to ask the question what is that billboard trying to tell us oh it's trying to tell me that i'm not important as a man for example um if i don't have this watch you know, I'm, I'm just not fashionable, you know, I'm out of touch with reality or society, that I'm not going to be desired by women, so I have to go and get this watch. You know, if we see a billboard with a, uh, a woman who's, who has all this makeup on, and, you know, she has this, this body that they're really trying to sell, you know, what is that billboard telling you? Um, well, it's telling women, especially, and guys, that, hey, this is what it means to be attractive, that this is what it means to be desirable or look desirable and they're usually using that woman's body to sell something uh that has nothing to do <laughs> you know with her overall usually a car or you know whatever it may be um and that you know same thing with the cars you know it's like what when we see these commercials or these billboards with these cars on them it's like what is that car trying what is that billboard trying to subliminally tell you it's like hey i need to get this car so i can you know be accepted or so that i can have a good life it'll make me feel better you know i, I can go faster i'm not gonna you know be this disgusting undesirable person i need this car to make my life better or to give me joy or so that i can be accepted by society um while that billboard is also training the rest of society or that commercial is training the rest of society that hey you have to have this car if you want to be someone whereas the scripture says that you are loved by god and the issue is not in the things of this world that will pass away uh, that make you desirable because anybody can get a car anyone can work hard enough to get these things but what profits a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul everyone is going to die everyone is going to go into the grave and you can't take that car you can't take that rolex watch you can't take those females you can't take any of this stuff with you your life is going to be judged that is really what it comes down to. You can't take anything with you. You can't take that, you know, those necklaces and the diamonds and the, you know, the shoes and the Jordans and the Nikes and the, air, you know, whatever clothing, you know, that you're, that you're liking. You can't take any of the stuff with you. The entertainment, you know, the video games, the uh, whatever it may be, all of it. You can't take these things with you. What are you spending your time with? What are you investing with? What are you investing in? What are your what is your heart see that's what it comes down to when it comes to overcoming seduction we have to examine our heart because the first and second greatest commandment as luke ten twenty seven says is to love the lord your god with all your heart all your soul all your mind and all your strength and the second is like it to love your neighbor as yourself if your heart is still after the things in this world as it says in first john 2 the verse that we just read first john two fifteen. 
that we cannot love the world because if we love the world then the love of the father is not in us because all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of this world so if you're struggling with seduction if you're struggling with being seduced or being brainwashed or manipulated in any way i know brainwash is a, is a strong word but if you're struggling with this manipulation and struggling with deception and being accepted and all these things check your heart check the lies that you are believing check the lies that satan again who was the little g god of this world god with a little g he is not god god but he is given he has been given power for a short time over this world uh, to really test people and see whether or not their affections are really for God or if they're really for him, if they're really for the Lord Jesus. God does not want people who are halfway in and love towards him. He wants people who are hot or cold is what it says in Revelation. You can't be lukewarm. You have to be either hot or or cold you either love him with all your heart soul mind and strength or you don't you can't have competing affections where are your affections the bible talks about our affections an affection is a tender feeling toward another it's a fondness it is a feeling or a liking and a caring for something or someone so are our affections on the things of this world is it on material things do we have a strong liking or fondness or a uh, a caring you know this attention towards these unnatural materialistic things and these ideas that don't lead to further godliness or are our affections on christ is it on the things of the lord is it on god and his word and beauty and truth and love and life is it on these things or is it on death and that is the question that i have for you uh, to examine your heart to see whether or not you are really in the faith or you know to work these things out with the lord you know ask him to show you your heart and ask him to give you um knowledge and wisdom and understanding to discern the root behind these things uh to understand how you are being seduced by these things and what lie you are believing that satan tells you what void you're trying to fill exactly uh that satan is telling you because that's really how addictions are formed is a uh, based on a lie is 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 being based on this void um this lie that you're believing that these things are going to make you better and then you know when you live your life with this addiction you know it becomes your best friend in a sense you know you feel it's, it's not your best friend but you feel as if it's your best friend because it's been with you through thick and thin when people are addicted to television you know they go to sleep with it on you know they wake up and the tv's there you know they broke up with their girlfriend or boyfriend and the tv is there you know they're sitting in front of it you know, the first thing they do when they wake up is they turn it on and they have breakfast with the TV. They come home from work and they're falling asleep with the TV. That is the addiction process. It has become an affection, an, an unnatural affection <laughs> for this object that is telling them lies because, again, they're being programmed. This is how addiction works. It's the same with anything else. Food, you know, sex, whatever it may be, drugs. Um, that is how addiction works. Video games especially uh tv shows you know uh different uh weird cultural things this is how it works so you know we have to examine these really subtle things to really make sure that uh we are living for truth that we are in walking in the truth and walking in life and that we are not being seduced by uh satan who is telling us that we have to fill our life or our soul with things that are not going to fulfill us that are void that are empty that we cannot take with us um so that's what it comes down to i just had another thought when it comes to um talking about hollywood um notice that when we look at the uh celebrities that we call them stars um i spoke about hollywood and their roots uh, the roots within witchcraft uh, with the word Hollywood. Um, but notice how with celebrities we call them stars. Um, that's another thing is we call the celebrities stars. That is also 
uh, alluding to witchcraft because a lot of uh, witchcraft has to do with reading the stars and the planets some things like that to gain knowledge. And uh, I just thought about K-pop and we call them K-pop idols. You know, they're idols and the Bible talks about idols and idolatry and how much, you know, we have to avoid that and how much God hates it because it is causing our affections to be for things that are not good. We're making idols out of men. Um, that is idolatry. Uh, so we literally call them K-pop idols, those uh, Japanese, Korean uh, celebrities that uh, so many women and men do they look up to. You know, when you have a group of actors together who are um, looking, you know, who are um, performing uh, for a role, again, it's called a performance, but they're, they're also called a cast. The group of actors is called a cast. Think about that, like casting. They're casting a spell. You know, it's the same thing. It's all based on manipulation and witchcraft in that regard of manipulating people to believe something about reality that isn't true. They're putting on these stories. That's what TV is, the stories that you're putting into your mind. Not just stories, but it's brainwashing. That's why they call it a program. I mentioned that earlier. But it's these stories with a moral that they're trying to get you to believe uh, about reality. It's the same thing with the movies as well. It's, uh, just think about these things, guys. It goes very deep. Um, I don't want to go too deeply into this. I don't want this to be a video that's getting into Hollywood and exposing all of this stuff. But these are just things to think about on a surface level to get your gears grinding, you know, and to just really start looking at these things in your everyday life and examining them to really understand what they are and how they deceive people into moving further away from God and more into the lusts of their flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life that leads to death. I guess you can con consider this next part that I'm about to get into as part two of this video. Um, so we're going to now talk about uh, seduction uh, with the five senses that we can also fall into, really, really starting to understand how that works, how people are seduced. And we're going to uh, talk a little bit more about um, what witchcraft is according to scripture, uh, which is rebellion. Um, so yeah, let's start talking about that. Now, God gave us eyes to see colors and to see beautiful things. There are many things that Satan has made as well that are very beautiful. But beauty is not the defining characteristic of whether or not a thing is right or whether or not a thing is true. See, we fall into this idea of looking at a beautiful person or a beautiful thing and thinking that that is really where life is found. But it's not, because beauty, as we've just read in Proverbs 31, beauty is vain. Beauty is vain. Beauty fades. But it is the fear of the Lord. It is the fear of the Lord that guides us. A woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. So yes, God has blessed us with eyes to see colors, to see beautiful things. He's given us taste buds to taste delicious food. You know, he's given us feelings. You know, he's given us a body that is very sensitive to touch. And, you know, these things are good in and of themselves. He's given us ears to hear, to hear beautiful music that excites the soul. To give, He's given us a nose to smell, all sorts of things, you know, both the good and the bad. But these things are for, not only just for our survival, but they're a blessing as well. They are a good thing, and God has given us all good things, all things to enjoy. But that enjoyment is to be within the bounds that he has set, within the order which he has set. Because what will happen if we start tasting things, wanting to, to eat things that are not good for our bodies, as I've just explained here, and I guess you can call part one of this video, uh, with the McDonald's food. You know, it tastes good, but... It's poisonous. It's death. It leads to death. It's, 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 it's awful for your body. It leads to death. Junk food is not real food. It, 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 it hurts your body. It hurts the life that God has given you. These things are not the things that the Lord has given you to eat and to be food. I'm not saying that you're in sin for eating these things. I'm just starting, like I said before, I'm just starting this and using this as an example because these are things that we are all faced with. Uh, let me first clarify that I am not a Seventh-day Adventist. Yes, I eat a plant-based diet. But I am not a Seventh-day Adventist, for crying out loud. A lot of people think that I'm SDA because I preach a very strong uh, health message. Uh, not just, it's not about, that. see, this is the thing. 
our life is not about how trying to live a long life, but we are to be good stewards of our body. You know, we care about our health because God has blessed us with life and we want to serve him and we want to serve others and to love others for as long as we can and to be we don't want to put others in a situation where we have to be taken care of. If we can avoid that, if we can avoid sickness and, you know, a heart attack costs, how, how much is it? I think about a couple of million dollars. You know, it only takes an ounce of prevention, you know, to avoid that. So if we're not aware of the things that can deceive us, if we're not aware of the seduction of this world, the seduction of Satan to try to get us to bite into that apple to take a bite out of the things you know that may be appealing to our eyes and appealing to our flesh and maybe even provide the pride of life i know with food especially in america it's a social thing it's like oh if i don't eat these foods and i'm going to be rejected socially what's up with that isn't that crazy it's just there's something to think about how crazy it is that we as human beings have nothing else better to do than to sit around and eat eat food that isn't good for us and we're going to be a social reject if we're you know plant-based or vegan for example we're going to be hated how much how gluttonous is that how much idolatry is that that we reject a person based on the foods that they eat or don't eat that's just something to think about the kingdom of god is not eating and drinking but righteousness peace and joy in the holy ghost that is the true life but yet we're so shallow oftentimes that, you know, we poke fun of people uh, who, who are actually living a healthy life. That's really strange. It's just something to think about. So I say all of that to just show the power of seduction, to show just how manipulated we have been as a society by this world. We are not, we are not walking in wisdom or truth, but rather after the lust of our flesh. We're walking after the lust of the flesh. So let us consider that. Proverbs speaks as extensively about wisdom and how we have to walk in wisdom, and how wisdom will preserve your life. Walking in wisdom will preserve your life. Wisdom, it is the ability to discern or judge what is true, right, or lasting. It is insight. It is good judgment. Everything that we have to do uh, in this world, if we're in Christ, we have to judge everything to see if it is right or wrong. I don't use judgment like saying, oh, you know, you're judging me or something like that. I don't mean that in a hypocritical sense. And I don't mean that in a, con in a sense of condemnation. But every day when we wake up, we make judgments. You know, when we put on our clothing in the morning, we're judging what we want to wear, whether you know, we want to wear this shirt or that shirt, or if we want to wear, you know, these pants or that, you know, if we go out and go into the kitchen, you know we're judging what we want to eat for breakfast we're making judgments every moment of every day and we judge the words that we say you know or we should um you know because james chapter 3 talks about that we have to you know guard our tongue um we have to have uh, self-control which is a fruit of the spirit but that is what judgment is every day we're making judgments and when we have wisdom we're discerning what is right what is true what is lasting what is according to God, what will give us life. That is wisdom. Um, and go ahead and read just the entire book of Proverbs. It speaks about wisdom and just how it will preserve your life. Because uh, oftentimes if we're being seduced by something, we don't have wisdom. As I've mentioned earlier, the scripture says that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding are the three things that will keep you. Uh, Proverbs, again, it speaks extensively of this. So go ahead and... Um, you know, look into that. And maybe I will do a video uh, really deconstructing what knowledge, wisdom, and understanding are and how you can apply that to your life and how you can uh, be on guard uh, against the tactics of the enemy, how you can uh, be strong against the temptation of sin and seduction and, uh, you know, all of the weapons that the enemy has to come uh, against you, uh, that he uses against you. Okay. We often hear of stories about pastors and people who, especially in the Bible, uh, people like King Solomon, uh, who knew the word of God, and he was considered the wisest man to have ever existed, to have ever existed. He fell into the power of seduction. Why is this? This man knew the word of God. He was very, very strong, but yet he fell to seduction he fell to the women uh that he 
fell to the women of the strange land that he took uh, to be with them. And they corrupted him by their culture, by the things that they were practicing. Um, so this is very important to understand. This is a very, very serious topic. You can know the word of God very well. You can know a lot of things. You can have a lot of head knowledge. But where is your heart? That is the question. Where is your love? Where are your affections? The Bible says, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. 1 Corinthians 10, 12, it says, Wherefore, let him that thinks he stands, take heed lest he fall. If you think that you're standing, if you think that you're strong, you better watch out and take heed. Don't be prideful in thinking that you're not human or that you're above correction or that you're above lusting, that you're above fornication, that you're above adultery or that you just cannot be deceived. The Bible says over and over and over and over again, it says it hundreds of times. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. Hundreds. I'm not using that literally. It probably says it somewhere around 60 times or so. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. But the Bible says numerously. That's the point. Do not be deceived. Take heed. Be aware. Be cautious. These things are very important. They're out to get your soul. They are out to twist you, to lie to you, to deceive you, to hurt you. Now, we don't walk around in this world with the spirit of fear on us as if we're afraid of everything. Now, we're cautious, but we're not to be walking in a spirit of fear. For the scripture says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. But there's a balance because we have to flee just as Joseph did when Potiphar's wife came after him to try to seduce him into being um, in relation with him when he was alone. So we flee. We ask questions. We test things to see if they're so. You see, Joseph, when Potiphar's wife came to him and he told and she told him to lie with him. He did not sit there and rationalize with her. He did not sit there and think to himself, hmm, I wonder how if I can get away with this somehow. I wonder how far I can really go without getting too close to the line. You know, he didn't sit there and ask questions to himself. He fled. He ran out of that situation. He ran. He fled. He did not sit there and entertain the idea. Again, there's the word entertainment again. I have mentioned this throughout this video before. Entertainment can be very deceptive. He did not entertain that thought. He did not allow his heart to even go near that. He saw the warning signs. He saw where it was leading and he fled. He knew that he was, that that was something that he could get caught up into he knew his temptations and he fled he respected that because he loved the lord he did not put potiphar's wife or the temptation to lie with her above his devotion and love to god his devotion and love to loyalty to truth to justice to all these right things he did not lay with another man's wife he ran when that opportunity presented itself. She tried to seduce him, but he knew he had humility to know his weaknesses, and he ran, and he was blessed. His heart was in total love to God. 1 Corinthians 13, the famous love chapter, as they call it, it says that you can have all knowledge, you can have all prophecy, you can know all these things, but if you have not love, you are nothing. The King James says, if you have not charity, you are nothing. Let me read that. It says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. And then you can go on and read that list of what charity is or what love is. Love or charity, it suffers long. It is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, meaning that it is not prideful. It doesn't seek its own. It is not puffed up. It does not behave itself unseemly. It seeketh not her own. It is not easily provoked. It thinketh no evil. 
It rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Beareth all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. So, the word knowledge, there it is again. Now, there is a good knowledge and there is a bad knowledge. There is a knowledge of God and there is a knowledge of the world. Just as there is the wisdom of God and there is the wisdom of this world. The word witchcraft or the word witch, it denotes etymologically one that knows. Let me repeat that. The word witch the etymology of that is one that knows or one that has knowledge. Remember in Genesis where Satan told Eve that she will know good and evil, that she will have knowledge of good and evil. And he was implying that she was dumb or was missing something because God was hiding and that his character was one that he was going to keep her dumb or blind or stupid and dependent you know this is the lie this is the root of that lie of what satan satanism that what he tries to free is it's about the false liberation it's false freedom the free people into believing that you can have this knowledge and this is what will set you free here's the secret you can be enlightened you can have this truth see that's the seduction when it comes to false doctrine when it comes to getting involved in drugs when it gets, comes to getting involved in all sorts of sexual seduction and lusts and anything that tries to keep our heart away from god that is the root of it creating that void i cannot say this i am sounding like a broken record throughout this it creates that void in your heart to try to get you to believe that god is not going to fill it and that you can have an alternative you can have better knowledge deeper knowledge you can have this power this control you can manipulate you can do these things and that will give you freedom that is the root of it that ladies and gentlemen is the root of witchcraft it is about being one's own God, as Satan said, that ye shall be as gods, that your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. It is about being your own God, being in control, having power to manipulate people to do what you want them to do by using sorcery or magic or manipulation or deception or seducing. That is witchcraft. 1 Samuel 15.23 it says, For rebellion is as the sin of a witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. So that is the understanding that we need to have, that rebellion and usurping God's authority, as Satan did here, he, he questioned God's order of reality that God created rules and boundaries and he said oh you can get outside of these boundaries and you'll have power that is witchcraft that is the root of witchcraft you know God said to love him with all your heart soul mind and strength he said to avoid these certain type of women who are out to seduce you and they're adulterous and they're fornicating he said to avoid these types of women you know don't go over here and kill people you know and, and to to do all of these evil things don't lie don't cheat don't steal you know he's he's setting boundaries here and witchcraft says oh you know these things are okay in a certain way you know i can do this you know it's very seductive it, it is it is trying to get people to follow or to reject god's law to try to make it appear more attractive than what sin actually is again we talked about the mcdonald's commercials and how they seduce people into wanting to eat something that is really bad for them and credit card companies um all of these different things you know it's the same thing when it comes to sin and dealing with the nature of our heart and our affections uh, it's trying to move us away from God's word, to move us away by believing that, hey, there's something better. There's something that we don't understand. You know, maybe we're ignorant. Maybe God just doesn't really care about us. Maybe he just doesn't want us to have a good time. You know, I have all of these desires here and he just won't meet them the way that I want him to. You know, I don't understand this. There's, these people are having so much fun, more fun than I am. You know, maybe maybe there is a secret knowledge that i don't really have that i need to get see that is witchcraft that is the that is the core of it that is the nature of seduction 
there's something in our society today called relativism and postmodernism, and it teaches the idea that there's no such thing as right and wrong. The Bible says that there will be a time where evil will be called good, and good will be called evil. There's an inversion. So everything that is evil will now be considered good, and anything that is good, people will regard those good things as evil. 1 Timothy 4.1, as I've started off uh, this video, I quoted 1 Timothy 4.1 saying, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Samuel, uh, 1 Samuel 28, uh, 3 through 25, uh, you see in 1 Samuel that Saul consulted a medium and he paid the price for that. And he didn't walk away with anything beneficial. He, he got into even more trouble from consulting this witch. Any spirit that is not of God's spirit is a devil. It says in Galatians chapter 1 verse 8 and 9 that, But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so I say now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that ye have received, let him be accursed. People who are preaching another gospel or another way or another order or another law, you know, and they're saying that this is how you get close to God or this is how you find freedom. This is how you actually find life. That is another gospel. These people are already under a curse. They are under a curse and we are not to be associated with that. Why? Because we can also be seduced. These people are under a curse. They do not want to hear the truth. They have been given over. It says that God gives them over to a reprobate mind. In Romans 1 28, it says, and even as they did not like to reign, retain God in their knowledge, they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. God gives people over when he notices that they just don't want to love him, that they want to go their own way, that they want to be their own God. He says, okay, I'm going to give you over and it's going to be to their destruction. He's not going to force people to love him who don't want to love him. So there is a spiritual warfare that we are engaged in. Ephesians 6 clearly speaks about that. And there are so many Christians who want to engage in these people who are bringing these cursed doctrines. And they're saying, oh, we just have to love them. We have to accept them. You know, we have to bring them into our church. We have to help them because they're lost. You know, and we're, and we're sinners too. You know, and we just have to help them to come in. And we just have to love them. And maybe they'll change. And then all the, all the while, they are being corrupted by these doctrines because they have let these wolves who clearly don't care about God into the church because they are coming underneath this guise of false love that is a seducing spirit this new version of love that is being masqueraded as light today that is not loving but it is of this world it is of death and it leads to destruction by this example satan is using christians and deceiving christians to say and he's telling them that you're not actually loving or tolerant or patient because you're not allowing these wolves into your church you're not allowing these abusers into your church so that is what he's saying he's allowing this nonsense to be preached by these pastors by these people in high authority we don't just follow authority just because they're authority we have to test and prove these things to see if they're so the scripture says in first thessalonians 5:22 to prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. We test these things. We test these doctrines. We test everything and everyone to see if they're really of God. And the problem with the church is that they do not have the discernment. They do not have the truth. They do not understand a thing which they are preaching. And they allow wolves into their congregation to eat up the sheep, to eat up the babies. And then they turn away to the seducing spirits and doctrines. And that thing falls apart. We have seen it time and time again. If you have your eyes open, Christian churches being infiltrated by, by all of these different cults, by all of these witches, you know, there are uh, many of these churches down uh churches down here on the streets and everything like that these are actual witches covens a lot of people don't realize that and the pastors are involved in witchcraft themselves and they don't a lot of times they are seduced and not even knowing what witchcraft is and therefore their church gets overtaken 
You know, in the congregation, when I see the church, I'm not talking about the building, but the people, they get overtaken by these satanic spirits and these doctrines. And we see it time after time again, and the scriptures are so clear, and the, and the scriptures warn about this over and over and over again. But we do not have ears to hear, and we do not have ears to understand. Why? Because people have itching ears in the last days. Let us not be of those kind who have itching ears. Let us be of the kind who have truth, who have knowledge, who have understanding, who have a love for the Lord, and who have a love for the truth. The scripture says in 2 Thessalonians 2.10, I always quote this verse on my channel here. It says, And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Again, they received not the love of the truth, that they m might be saved saved because they did not love god they did not receive a love for the truth they did not care about the truth they cared more about pursuing their passions there's a verse that says in first timothy 5 6 that she that lives in pleasure is dead while she liveth again but she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth if you are living in pleasure, if you are living only for the sole purpose of pleasure, to bring pleasure, to constantly stimulate, and to constantly have your five senses heightened, then you are dead while you're living. You're not living life. You do not have life. Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He does not come to give you life based on the things that fade the things of this world the things of the flesh but in the spirit in the holy spirit in his spirit that gives you truth to protect you knowledge wisdom and understanding to protect you not in a false form of protection that you have to manipulate things and and call upon things and to do anything outside of god to try to get you certain things to bend in your favor or to manipulate people or hurt them to try to get things that you want or whatever it may be that is witchcraft that is witchcraft deception lying all of those things those things end in death and they end in disloyalty and heartache and pain but christ is life his ways are truth his ways are life I spoke earlier about men and how they are seduced by women. Let me address the women now. You know, we are easily seduced by men who, uh, for most women, they are seduced just by men who look attractive. And then they come with this swagger, you know, and they appear to be really, you know, just just cool. And a lot of, guy, a lot of women like the bad boy types. My SO and I were talking about that last night. Uh, we were looking at that video, The Phantom of the Opera. And we were just noticing, he was talking about how there were girls at his college that just were obsessed with Phantom of the Opera. And they were obsessed with that song in the video. And I was just like, what on earth do women, why do women like this so much? And I was thinking about it as I was watching the video. And um, he was explaining how it's like, you know, the guy in the video is like this, this bad guy. You know, he's trying to like, he has a scar on his face that he's trying to... Um, cover up and masquerade and he's like seducing her and to go into darkness and i'm just like what on earth you know it's like that's just to me that's just the dumbest thing um and to people who have this understanding it will appear dumb because she is just falling head over heels for this guy who is leading her into darkness and he comes with this 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 giant you know robe on and you know he looks like this majestic vampire guy you know and i'm thinking about i started thinking about things like twilight and how women are so seduced into stories like twilight or maybe even that one um that one but i think it's uh 50 shades of gray that one uh, women like they tend to like things like that but if you have understanding you will realize just how toxic those relationships are just how toxic those stories are those videos music videos and you will understand the deeper message that they are preaching that it is leading to darkness and if the holy spirit is within you you will not put up with that you will hate it you will have because you hate it because you understand that this is hurting people that this is not romantic this is death this is confusion Fusion. this is manipulation it, the relationship is not going to be substantial you know it's this fantasy that is not built on reality this is not the way people actually are this is not the way we're designed to be loved you know you will have this understanding and yeah 
it's getting outside of reality is what it is. That's what seduction is, is getting outside of reality by the use of, of coercion, of manipulation, of an illusion. You know, just because a guy has, has is attractive physically and he goes to the gym and works out and has large muscles, that doesn't mean that he is a good person on the inside. He may be attractive on the outside, just like women may be attractive on the outside. It's an illusion because what is their soul? What is their love? Are they really devoted to you or are you just in it for because he's attractive like what does that lead to in the long term are they going to be able to care for you are they going to provide for you are they going to protect you are they loyal to you you know are what are, what are these things where are their devotions what are their goals you know what, what there's so much more that meets the surface and we have to understand people deeply and that is the nature of seduction is is this idea that we can have whatever it is that we want and we automatically know something just based on appearances. The scripture says that we do not judge by appearances, that God doesn't judge by appearances, but he judges with righteous judgment. Man judges by appearances, but God judges with righteous judgment. We are also to not judge by appearances. We have to judge with righteous judgment. So let us consider that, um, because that is one way that we can be on guard against temptation and manipulation and witchcraft and seduction. There is nothing new under the sun. All of these things are old. There is nothing new. There is no amount of knowledge, no amount of truth or anything that is new. It is always an old repackaged lie that is coming to you and saying, hey, you can have this. Look at this pretty thing. Or, you know, look at this over here. You can have that. You know, it's not. These things are not new. The things that Satan preached, they were, they were from the beginning. It was new to Eve, but it was not new. These things... Uh, they are resurfaced today. They are resurfaced today. It may be new to us because we're born, you know, we're 20 years old um, and 30, however old you are. Um, I'm speaking to my age group now, uh, those of us who are in our 20s. But, you know, especially for us, you know, we haven't been on this world long enough. And a lot of a lot of millennials are, you know, very prideful and thinking that they know everything, that they've experienced all of it already and they are, have already drawn a conclusion you know, in this world, um, millennials are not the only age group that are guilty of this. The older generations are guilty of this same pride as well. It is a human issue. It is not an issue that is just for one generation. It is a human issue. Pride exists all, has existed from the beginning. And that is the main pride that Satan had in the beginning in the Garden of Eden. Um, that was the sin, uh, that caused him to get kicked out of heaven. And it was pride. He said that he wanted to be like God. He wanted to be above God. He wanted to be like the most high. And yeah, it's the same temptation that we have today is pride, the pride of life that I mentioned earlier that we have to be on guard against. Witchcraft is a magical or irresistible influence. It is an attraction or a charm. Again, an irresistible influence. It is charming. It is a charm. It is communication in, in other forms is, is sorcery or magic and other forms is communication with the devil. Um, rituals and practices that incorporate beliefs in magic. Um, you know, it can be neo-pagan and all that, but the way that we understand it for the roots of it, it is trying to usurp authority. It is all about getting outside of God's order, God's rules, God's law to establish your own and to follow your heart. You know, the Disney movies say the Disney movies are all about following your heart and, you know, all these songs that are telling you to just do what you want. You know, it's the Aleister Crowley do what thou wilt mentality. Aleister Crowley was a Satanist and he said, uh, do what thou wilt um, shall be the whole of the law. And you see lots of celebrities following the same mindset. Like Jay-Z, he had a hoodie that said, do what thou wilt on it. You know, and there's just so much of this mindset that is all throughout, even with the Disney movies, as I've mentioned already. It is everywhere. And you have to be on guard against the seduction that is telling you you can do whatever you want and you'll be fine. There is no law of cause and effect. There is no consequence. You know, just do what you want. You don't have to... You know, there is no afterlife. There is no God that you have to fear. You know, listen to John Lennon's Imagine. saying, imagine there is no heaven. You know, these things are the deception. They brainwash. They condition us to believe a certain way. Uh, to get outside of God's law. To get outside of reality. To get outside of protection. Outside of boundaries. 
Now, I'm going to address these things, uh, the nature of seduction, a little bit more from an emotional and mental or psychological standpoint here for a little bit. Oftentimes, we as human beings get caught up in seduction and we fall to temptation and seduction because there is a need or a felt need that we have that is not being met. For example, in Matthew chapter 4, Satan actually went up to the mountain to tempt Jesus and he told him to turn the stones into bread because Jesus was hungry and he was tired and he was up there and he hadn't eaten and Satan told him to turn the stones into bread if he were really, you know, the son of God. And then uh, Jesus replied with scripture and he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And then Satan tempted him again and he tried to tempt Jesus to jump off a cliff. And then that didn't work because, uh, you know, Jesus, he knew the scriptures. And then Satan tried to tempt Jesus again. And he told Jesus, bow down and worship me and I'll give you the whole world. Um, I'm paraphrasing all of this, guys. You can go back and read Matthew chapter 4 for yourselves. But he tempted Jesus. He said, "If you, I will give you the whole world if you just bow down and worship me. And then Jesus rebuked him. And uh, again, Jesus used scripture to combat Satan. Um, and after that, Satan fled. He ran and he left him alone. And then the angels came to minister to Christ. The same thing, that is the example of how we fight temptation and seduction it is the same thing that jesus went through and it also applies to mu to us if satan tempted jesus in such a way what makes us think that we're not going to be tempted also in the same way and we are every day and we have to understand the nature of how these things work we have to understand the power of god's word um, again, that was the first thing that Satan tried to undermine and undermine in Genesis chapter three, um, when he cast, cast doubt on God's word, uh, to Eve, when he said, did God really say, <laughs> yea, has God said that you shall not eat of every tree in the garden? Yea, has God said, see, when God says something, that's his word. Just like when I'm speaking right now, I'm speaking words. When God spoke, that's his word. And we have his word deliver us, delivered unto us. And that is the word of God. And we have to protect that. And we have to know it and hide it within our heart. Uh, it is written in the scriptures that in Psalm 119.9, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to thy word. So in other words, how can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to God's word. That is how we love and understand and keep the word of God. That's how we stay within the proximity, the boundaries that God has established. Because God loves us, he has given us free will to choose whether or not we will obey him or whether or not we will hate him. It is the choice is ours. The scripture says, choose this day whom you shall serve. And a lot of times we believe lies about God. We believe lies about Christianity. Uh, a lot of times we're faced with this false version of Christianity, like Catholicism or postmodern Christianity or, you know, some other warped version of Christianity. And we don't read the scriptures for ourselves, rightly divided. And we come away with this weird, awful, perverted view of God and Jesus and, you know, and uh, all this stuff. You know, we believe that Christianity is about going to church and getting involved in the false church system, you know, and all of this other nonsense that's going on. And that none of that is Christianity. And, you know, so that's the thing that deceives a lot of people. There's a seduction to be religious. Um, and a lot of Christians have fallen into that. They have fallen into this lie. And, uh, you know, so that's one of the things that we have to be aware of. From a psychological standpoint um, and an emotional standpoint, because the two are kind of interlinked, is that um, if we're being seduced by something, if we're being tempted by something, we have to understand ourselves. We have to understand why we have to why we're being tempted by these things we have to understand our heart we have to understand our affections you know the scripture causes us to have this knowledge to have understanding 
Um, this is how we stay on guard against the enemy. You know, if we're tempted because we're hungry, you know, maybe, maybe if we're turning on the TV or if we're looking on YouTube or on the internet and we see, you know, something that we shouldn't be eating and we're diabetic or we're struggling with something and it's like, ask yourself, have you eaten today? You know, or if you're, if you're being tempted by this thing, have you eaten today? Or do you really understand just how bad these things are for you? You know, before giving into the flesh, make it, make it a habit. And this is a, this is a matter of discipline here. Make it a habit to always check, to investigate, to research, to test, to, you know, to use a scientific method to prove to see if these things are true. If I do this, what's going to happen? You know, examine the law of cause and effect. You know, be slow to respond to things. Be slow to judge. Don't be quick to just give into your flesh and just say, oh, I've done this before. I haven't died yet. You know, it's fine. You know, I don't see what the big deal is. See, that's, le that's, that's not wisdom. That is not a wise mindset. Oh, there are other people who smoke cigarettes all day and they drink and they're fine. They're still alive. It looks like they're having fun so I can do it too. That is not wisdom. That is not the way that we examine things to see if they're right or true or lovely, especially according to scripture. Um, we have to have understanding. Again, understanding, knowledge, and wisdom will guide you. It will guide you. If we're feeling lonely and then that, you know, seduces us to go to seek love in places that we shouldn't be seeking, um, people like to go to, um, whorehouses, or they like to turn on pornography, or they look at things that they shouldn't be watching on TV, or on, you know, what, wherever, you know, talking to people in ways they shouldn't be speaking to them to, um, people who they're not committed to, you know, the choice to abandon vulnerable dependence on the word of God is what brought man to ruin, and it is also shame that is the dread of being known, so when Adam and Eve are in the garden, again, this whole lecture is, is founded upon Genesis uh, 2 and 3, uh, dealing with Adam and Eve. Usually it is anger and entitlement and shame that leads us to look for love in the wrong places. It is those three things, shame, anger, and entitlement, that usually cause people to run to places for a love um to get some sort of fulfillment uh, that will not fulfill them oftentimes things can be so deep we feel that people will hate us because of the things that we've done in the past you know so it is the fear of exposure it is revelation that we're afraid of it is dread of the consequences um and it is empowering trust that we're afraid of um, because that shame brings, it follows with it a fear of rejection. Um, so that's something that we have to look out for. This is a temptation that the enemy just loves. He loves to capitalize on this with God's people or anyone, any person in this world. He loves to try to get people to fall into this cycle. It's like, oh, you know, no one cares if I do this. No one cares about me. Da 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 da. You know, seduction often moves when there is a lack of hope let me repeat that seduction often moves or it is often acted upon when there's a lack of hope in someone's life when hope is not present then people are being they are falling prey to almost anything to try to give them life you know satan is giving this life raft throwing this life raft it's not a life raft at all it's a it's, it's garbage but it appears like a life raft it's a mirage it's an illusion to people when they are in a situation where their flesh is tired where their emotions are tired where their spirit has just been beaten up and they want to turn to these things and that's where the seduction comes in at because that seduction is <sighs> using those emotions it is how do i say this it is exciting a part of themselves that hasn't been excited in a while because they have been depressed that's what satan tried to do with jesus when he was up on the mountain when he was fasting when he was separated and and uh, he was working very hard for the ministry and he was tired so that is what we have to be on guard against especially so one tactic that you can use um, 
if you're prone to seduction in this way is again the first thing like i've said earlier is to to arm yourself with god's word that's the main thing that's what jesus did and that's how he fought off satan you see that satan fled he ran after that when he saw that that jesus could not be uh his his the knowledge that he have could not be broken through um so arm yourself with knowledge wisdom and understanding and know god's word the second thing that you have to do is know why you are falling into uh this temptation or what what sorts of things you're seduced by you can figure this out of course by praying and asking god to show you these things that's the first step uh, because we do not rely on our own understanding um we allow the holy spirit to show us these things if we do not have that knowledge yet um, but you can take a notebook or a journal and just sit down and reflect and pray and ask god as you're writing down to show you um you know yourself you know work through yourself um jordan peterson he calls this sorting yourself out you know and it's just really taking time to reflect and meditate um, before god and ask him to reveal why you are falling into whatever seduction or temptation that you are subject to and once you figure this out then that's the third thing is that now that you understand the root you know ask god to give you healing you know work through these things work through these things and get healing um seek counseling if you need to um try to meet whatever felt need that you have is this need really a need or is it a felt need and if it is a real need you know god says that he will supply all of your needs are you trusting him for that if you're not trusting him then that's your relational issue with god and you know you're gonna have to sit down and work out your relationship with god and figure out if you really trust him and if you don't trust him figure out why you're not trusting him what sorts of lies you're believing about him you know put all these things to the test uh so that is really a way that you can um be on guard against temptation and be on guard against seduction um if you're constantly you know battling against this so the next time that something happens you would already have this ammunition underneath your belt you have already done your homework um so you're already on guard when the test comes in the real world you already know the scriptures to use you already know um why you're getting uh, tempted by this you know yourself you know your heart you know your 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 struggles um and you're on top of it because you have armed yourself with the armor of god and the word of god and uh yeah it will take time to work through all of the subtleties because there may be very very subtle things that you're not able to detect um that keep causing causing you to go back to whatever thing that you're caught up in or if it's an addiction or whatever it may be um so that's going to take some time to work out uh, but you absolutely have to have understanding to know why it is that you are tempted uh, by certain things and what lie those things are trying to tell you and really understanding if you ac absolutely did act upon that, what is the logical conclusion of following that thing? And then understanding God's perspective on this and the dangers of it and really caring about your relationship with God and really fearing the Lord. Um, because it always comes back to a lack of faith, as we've discovered here in Genesis 3, that when we give into temptation, when we give into lies, it is the first attack is the lack of faith. That's what Satan did with Eve in the garden. He attacked her faith in God, even though she knew God presently and physically they were together. It wasn't a matter of knowing if God existed or not. She knew that he existed. But again, Satan attacked her faith in God's character to say, oh, is he really loving? He's not really loving. You know, he's just trying to hide things from you. You know, and when you eat of this tree, you're going to have, you know, the knowledge of good and evil. You know, it's the same thing with us. So let's, let us be on guard against that. Um, another reason why we are afraid of standing up and uh, another reason why we fall into seduction and temptation is because we're afraid of standing out. We don't want to be the ones that are standing out, especially Christians. Um, see, that's the thing is that we're, we so badly want to fit in with this world. And a lot of Christians, especially, like, they don't have understanding. That they don't really understand the law of cause and effect. They don't really understand consequences. They don't really understand why it is they believe what they believe uh, truly from the heart. So they get caught up in these really terrible things. And then, you know, they 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 have a bad understanding of, of Christ and what he's done and the scriptures and they don't know the scriptures and they're just weak. They, their prayer life is awful. And yeah, so they're not really walking 
into truth that they claim to know. So the thing about that is that there's usually a competing affection, as I've spoken about earlier, there's something competing inside of them. Um, and everyone deals with this, but especially with those who have not crucified their flesh. They don't want to stand out. The scriptures say that we are a light in this world. If they really understand their purpose, if you really understand your purpose, you are listening to this, realize that if you are in Christ, that you are a light. You are not supposed to fit in there with this world. This world is dead. It is dying. It is dead. And there is no life. And these people are on their way to hell. And you have the light. You have the gospel to preach to them and to tell them to come follow Christ. Come out of this world because this world is passing away. We see it here in 2020. Everyone is waking up. They see they don't want to be a part of this world anymore. They hate it. You know, they, they see just how awful things are starting to get and they're afraid, you know, <laughs> It's awful, and it's only going to get worse, the Bible says. This is just the beginning of the end. The Bible says there's going to, these are just birth pangs, the scripture says. These things, the yeah, scripture prophesied that these things are going to happen. So, this is what we have to be aware of. These are the things that we have to be aware of. You are not supposed to fit in with this world, and it will be hard. The, the scripture says that the way is narrow. Matthew seven fourteen it says, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Again, few there be that find it. Stand strong, endure unto the end, know that you are a light. Do not grow weary in well-doing, beloved. Do not grow weary in well-doing. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good, the scripture says come out of this world come out of lust reject the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life reject all of these seductions to try to get you to move away from god and more onto yourself and more onto death come out of these things and cling to christ follow him you will know the ways of life he did not say that it was going to be easy he said behold in this world you're going to have great trouble but behold be of good cheer I have overcome the world. In this world, you will have great trouble, Jesus said. But be of good cheer. He has overcome this world. That is what he said. Stand firm in the faith. You know, a lot of times, Christians especially, I mentioned this earlier, they are afraid, they are afraid of what people will think of them if they don't accept you know, really toxic people into their congregation or wolves or uh, people who abuse, you know, they just say, oh, you know, we just have to love them anyways, bring them in, you know, and that is coming from a fear of man. And it may be coming from a place of loneliness that they feel like they need a friend and they just don't care. But it's, it's really selfish because they're also setting up the rest of the church. When I say the church, I mean the people, they're setting up the rest of the ecclesia to also be taken over by these wolves and they are not being good shepherds. So if you, and another thing that I want to mention is, you know, just take time to just be connected with knowing your flesh. And you, again, if you're in Christ and your flesh should be dead, but just knowing your temptations. When I say knowing your flesh, I'm talking about just your body in general. You know, if you're hungry, you know, you better, you need to eat something healthy so you won't be caught up in temptation. You know, if you are, you know, tempted by drugs or cigarettes or something that's something that you have to crucify and that you have to find an alternative to understand the emotional reasons why you are turning to that thing what sorts of anxieties are you facing and why are you facing those anxieties what is making you want to turn to that cigarette what is making you want to turn to that drug or alcohol you know what is it is it just for fun? Do you believe that this is how you get fun? Okay, well, that's a philosophy issue. That is an issue with your worldview. That means that you are not valuing your life as much as you should, that you believe that it's something that you can throw away just for the sake of pleasure, because anything can happen when you're under the influence of a drug, uh, such as alcohol. And the thing is that you're not really valuing health or life or the lives of others. So that is a love issue that you're facing. The same goes with any other drug, cigarettes, whatever it is, heroin, whatever it may be. It's the same mindset. It is a lack of value for life. So you have to understand the root of why you believe that. It's a, it's a belief 
issue with God that you don't really understand that God gave you life. You don't really understand your purpose. You know, your this heartbreak there that is that may be confusing you. See, all of these things are seduction. This is how seduction works. Um, so we have to be on guard against these things. Um, you know, so um, it can be very simple, like you know, just needing to eat some food because you're feeling stressed or anxious. Uh, sometimes when you're hungry, you get really anxious and you get angry because you haven't eaten. You know, it can be as simple as that, but it, you have to know that if you are prone to having low blood sugar and that can affect your mood and that can cause you to fall into some sort of, of temptation, you have to know that, you know, and you can gain discipline over that as well um, and self-control through the Holy Spirit. Um, so these are things that uh, just have to be uh, considered um, from the most basic to the most serious if you're lonely and you feel like you don't have any any uh, any relationships you know that you can be a part of or you don't know anyone and you know your sex drive is really high you know ask God to help you you know thank God for giving you those desires again a sex drive is not a bad thing but it's bad when you start it becomes bad when you start acting upon it in ways like fornication and adultery and you're looking at pornography and you have lust in your heart for things you shouldn't be lusting after you know so that is when it becomes a sin but if that's your struggle you know don't get mad at God for giving you the desire just like don't get mad at God for giving you the desire to like tasty food if you're a glutton you know thank god for giving you these pleasures but ask him to either give you the self-control or to understand the root of why this thing is so on fire and if you're given to um you know having that drive ask, go out and start looking for people to marry i mean you have to get married if that's your your, your situation there, you know, start dating, start looking for godly men and women, uh, you know, to date and to, you know, get to know them and use, use wisdom with that. Um, make sure that you yourself, most importantly, that's the first thing is make sure that you are <laughs> in the situation and in the right mind and you have the, the character to be a person who is worthy of being dated or being married, that you're ready for that. Um, you know, take time to invest in yourself and to develop yourself and to be transformed into the image of Christ. Uh, because you don't want to get into a marriage and you have all of these problems and these emotional baggage and you're just making life difficult for not only your spouse, but any kids you may have and just everyone else in general. You don't want that. You want to live a life of peace. I mean, we all should want to live a life of peace. If we don't, then, you know, we have, an, we have a heart issue. Um, so, yeah, we have a love issue there. We know that pain and sin exists. This, that's nothing new. We know that these things are real. So why do we want to go and start causing pain and suffering to others? You know, there's a heart issue there if that is something that you are struggling with. Um, that is a value issue, as I've mentioned earlier, not valuing human life. Um, so there's a pain there that needs to be addressed. And if you are that person, you know, I pray that you will get to the bottom of that. But it is a love issue. It is a sin issue. It is a selfishness. It is some, there's something warped warped about the way that uh, you're understanding life and people to begin with the way that you are understanding god so go ahead and you know search the scriptures and really just test these things to see if they're true because it is so detrimental to live life believing a lie your life is too precious you don't want to continue living a lie and then banking your entire life and the lives of others on a lie um, so that is the thing, and that's what Satan wants us to do. He wants us to lie, and he wants us to believe lies, just as he did, uh, just as he told, uh, Eve in Genesis chapter 3 here. So yeah, don't get angry at yourself, um, because a lot of Christians, I spoke about this in my other video on what is sin, um, and I explained, again, like I've mentioned earlier at the beginning of this video, I explained already in that video how to fight temptation a little bit more in detail, and I explained that, so again, like I said, go back and read, or listen to that video, again, link in the description on, uh, what is temptation and how temptation works. If your desires are good and they are natural and they are normal, then that is fine. You know, you can thank God for that, but don't get mad for having desires, especially sexual desires, because those things are not bad in and of themselves. God designed you to have such desires, and it's not... See, that's one of the lies that we believe in our society. I'll address this uh, very briefly it's one of the lies in our society is that they say that sex is the thing that's going to fulfill 
you know, you as a person. And it never does, because if that were true, then all the prostitutes and all of the people who are in having illicit sex and one night stands, they're going to be fulfilled and they would never f return to it again. They would never return to it if it really fulfilled them, because they would be fulfilled, right? But these people are the most broken, the most damaged people that you will ever see. Why? Because they're buying into the lie that Satan is telling them that, oh, you can have the secret knowledge, get outside of God's wor word, get outside of God's law, where he said, you know, one man, one woman, you know, you are to be in marriage, you know, together, committed to one another, loyal to one another, you know, serving one another and all of these things. He's saying, no, you can do anything you want to and that's what's going to fulfill you. And then it never does. And people wind up in severe heartbreak and loneliness and all these things because of sin so you know that's that's what we have to be on guard against god designed us a certain way physically and he knows what is best and when we test these things to see if they are true according to truth not according to deception we will see that when they are applied they produce life and life abundantly because god's ways are perfect we test these things. We don't just, it's not a blind faith that we just believe anything that, you know, the Bible says or that the word says without questioning. See, that's a blind faith. No, the Bible says to test all things, to prove what is good, prove these things. God wants us to challenge him. God wants us to test him because if you have something that is true, you don't have any fear of it being tested because it's just stand up. If it's true, then it will stand up against any lie no matter how seductive no matter how deceptive it is a lie now there are people who are going to fall for that lie because as we've read in scripture they have not received a love for the truth but that is not going to be your problem if you really have a love for the truth it is heartbreaking when we see people fall into sin and fall into lies and deception that will destroy their souls However, you know, this is why we pray for them. This is why we are preaching messages like this. You know, this is why we have understanding. This is why we have to arm ourselves with knowledge and wisdom and understanding according to truth, not according to a deception. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right, guys, I think that will conclude the end of this video. Um, there is so much that I can say about this topic of seduction, but I think this serves as a pretty good, uh, very basic introduction um, into this topic. Uh, I may make a part two, maybe a part three, four or five, we'll see. But I just wanted to get this out there because I see so many people falling into this lie. They have no idea that there is a spirit of seduction, that there is a doctrine of demons, that they are in the last days, that they are falling for this, especially Christians. Um, and we need to be on guard against that. This, that is the reason why I'm making this video is because it is so prevalent. And this is something that the scriptures warn us about. The scriptures warn us of seduction, seductive spirits. It warns us of being bewitched. It warns us of being charmed. To, it warns us about, about witchcraft and so much more. We have to have eyes to see and ears to hear. We have to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves wise as serpents harmless as doves we have to know the nature of the enemy we have to know how he thinks we have to know what he does how he tries to get us caught but we have to be harmless we walk in love and our motives are pure we love people we do these things because we love god and we love man we care about them and we want the best for them we walk in reason we walk in truth we walk in understanding and clarity and in peace all these things lead to peace, guys, and that is what this channel is about. Peace with God. Learn peace with God. <sighs> and that concludes this video. <laughs> Go ahead and subscribe if you want to hear more content about this, about these topics. Um, if this benefited you or blessed you in any way, go ahead and leave a comment or a like. I know that I sound tired today. Um, it is very cold outside and, you know, it's just one of those winter days, you know, where it's just <laughs> your melatonin is just very low and you're just really tired and, you know, I'm probably going to go take a nap and, you know, get some tea. And yeah, so that's going to uh, probably make me feel better here. You know, but I'm doing fine. Um, I don't know if you guys, a lot of people usually comment over like, oh my goodness, you sound so tired. Is everything okay? <laughs> I'm absolutely fine. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to uh, mention that really quickly. But yeah, 
go ahead and leave a like if you want to and uh i will probably make a part two like i said uh we'll see and i will just pray us out here heavenly father we just thank you so much for your truth god we thank you so much for your word we thank you for the relief that we have the relief and the freedom that you give us in your spirit in your word god thank you for the truth that sets us free your word says in john 8 32 jesus you said that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free and that is what this message is all about is freedom it is knowledge that helps us to be free we shall know the truth lord there is only one knowledge and that comes from you there's only one source of knowledge that is based on truth and freedom and that is your truth jesus we thank you so much god for delivering us and christ so that we can be free from sin satan and death eternal death and death in general things that lead to death god we just thank you so much for your knowledge ah <sighs> God, I just pray for the listeners here, uh, those who are struggling with seduction or, or struggling with either being seducers or sed or falling into seduction or temptation, or witchcraft, all of that, God. I just pray that you will help them to know who you really are. God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would be with them and that you will help them to have love in their hearts for you, that you will open their eyes to your truth and to cast off any and all deception, any and all doubt, any and all lies that they have believed through their entire lives. People who have spoken things to them, people who are close to them, relatives, friends, whoever it may be, teachers, pastors, whoever it may be, Lord, it doesn't matter. There's only one voice that matters, and that voice is you. And anything that does not line up to your voice and your truth, God, it is to be rejected. That is a false gospel, and I pray that you will bless the listeners here with this discernment lord bless them with knowledge bless them with your truth bless them with the ability to know right from wrong to make right judgments help help them to care about their lives lord please god it is satan in this world we are in the last days and things are just so dark so dark here in 2021 god <laughs> just a few days god where's 2021 and things are just gonna probably your, your word says that you that things are gonna get worse so lord i just pray that you will prepare the listeners here who are listening to this who need this message <sighs> there will be a false peace that will come in this world and you know peace peace will that that is what people will say but then will come sudden destruction but god there's only one peace and that is through christ that is through you that we can have peace with you you did not come to bring peace but a sword this world is not our home this world is not where we find life this world will never fulfill if it did then everyone would be happy and everyone will have the time of their lives but we know that all of that is fake god you have given us understanding you have given us life help us to be on guard against peer pressures help us to be on guard against the lies of the enemy help us to always use logic and reason and your word to discern what is true and to care for others to care for ourselves and to care for our relationship with you in jesus name we pray amen god bless guys take care and stay strong in the word be unmoved and unwavering in his truth god bless guys i love you take care <laughs>